You're listening to Short Inspirations from Ralph. Permission to speak freely. One of the greatest gifts that we have been given, and I would rate this way up there, is when we were created, we were given freedom to choose. We can choose to think, to speak, and to go on any pathway that we want to take. This is a gift that's been given to us. It is a wonderful gift because when we choose and if we choose to be a Christ follower, it is a choice. There's no coercion of any sort. No one can make a person do anything. And yet there is an incredible sense emerging in our world to control what people think, what people say, and how people behave. The freedom for a person to be able to think and speak the truth is sacred. And so right now there is great tension between these two camps, if you like. So one camp would say, well, you can speak the truth, but only within the perimeters of what is acceptable to the various groups and communities and governments that are determining such things. The other camp is saying, no, no, no. The right to speak the truth as a person perceives it is a right that should be preserved. And this is why over the years I have really loved speaking on Marae at times, because at, at the Marae, at the Māori Marae, a person is able to get up and say whatever they like. They may not be agreed with, they may be uh, shot down in flames after that, but they have the right at least to be able to say how they see things. In this podcast, I want to clear up two things. Firstly, that if a person professes to follow the Christian pathway, then the way that they speak is clearly outlined in some of the scriptures that we've read out and other scriptures. Speaking the truth in what? Love. There is no place within Christendom for a person to hate someone else or to insult people. That is anti-Christian. That is not in any way, shape or form the way of Christ. The second thing that I want to clear up here is that people should be able to speak the truth in the way that they see it without hate, without insult, which may mean they don't agree with another person's stance on that particular issue. So what I'm saying here is it's possible to disagree with someone but not hate them. I'll say that again. It's possible to disagree with someone or their lifestyle or something else that's happening and not hate that person. There is great confusion in this area. Recently I interviewed a 14-year-old high school student and asked her, what do you think would be the main challenge that you would be facing at your school or in your community groups or peers? What is the number one thing? This is what she said. I think that one of the biggest challenges to face as a young person is the media and what you're exposed to. It can seem unharmful, but at my age, you're desperate to be part of a community to be part of a group of people so that you can fit in and the media is providing more and more opportunities to be part of this community of this group of people even if it's not exactly morally correct so as a Christian of that age I wonder how I can speak what my opinions are without being excluded from the community without being excluded from people my age in general interesting so what do you mean by media? Can you elaborate a bit more on that? 
Um, when I talk about the word media, I mean anything that you can access, that other people can access, and that you can see what other people have posted, where you can be exposed to different communities and other people's opinions, and sometimes it can stop you from being able to share your own opinions. I love the letter to the Colossians, and Colossians 3.17, where it says, And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. My encouragement to you today is to continue thinking and speaking the truth, but bring a lot of wisdom into that, and a lot of love too. Even in the face of exclusion, of insult, of being wrongly accused or misunderstood. God bless you.